Greek production represents 61% of the EU gilthead sea bream and European sea bass catch, and almost 30% of international production sold in more than 32 countries. Fish welfare is a major priority, both for the producers and professionals involved in the aquaculture sector, as well as for the scientific community, consumers, NGOs, regulatory authorities and the state. In order to evaluate welfare standards, specific measurable welfare indicators have been developed. These indicators can either be direct, relating to the fish themselves, or indirect, relating to the rearing environment and infrastructure. Furthermore, they are divided into operational welfare indicators, that is to say those which can be implemented on the farms and at the various stages of the production process, and into laboratory-based welfare indicators. As ectothermic organisms, fish are strongly affected by the temperature of the water. Each species presents a breadth of temperatures in which it survives. Sudden and sharp changes in salinity can result in reduced well-being and even mortality. The concentration of dissolved oxygen in water is a critical factor for fish well-being, which determines the availability of oxygen for respiration, requires the measurement of many points in the cage or tank, and entails the risk of not evaluating spots with low saturation, such as the center of the cage. When rearing fish in land-based tanks, pH values must be checked systematically. For both species, gilthead sea bream and European sea bass, pH values below 6.5 and above 8.5 are very poor living conditions. Turbidity of the water may give an early indication of degraded water quality of breeding water. Breeding density indirectly affects welfare and therefore must be evaluated together with other indicators. An absolute indicator value is not a reliable parameter and needs to be assessed together with the fish's way of life and its stage of development, its behaviour, as well as the size and technology of the farm. There are periods in the life of fish when they're exposed to artificial light, for instance in larval rearing, pre-fattening and hatcheries. In such cases, the lighting is a complex factor, described by the intensity, quality, spectrum, as well as its periodicity, photo period. The mortality indicator can be a marker for diagnosing and dealing with a possible disease. A practical limit, which should function as a warning signal, would be a mortality rate in a cage of around 35%. The health indicator includes clinical cases such as natural pathogens, infectious diseases and ectoparasites. The exterior condition of the skin, fins and other structures such as the mouth and eyes are important indicators of welfare. Injuries can be recorded as present or absent. Fish with skeletal deformities are a problem for the producers since consumers will not buy them. Fish with such deformities may have a higher mortality rate. It's a fact that stress and poor living conditions have a negative impact on fish's diet and nutrition. Despite all this, the appetite for food intake is influenced also by many other parameters. Body growth in bred fish usually refers to the increase in body weight and less so to body length. The specific growth rate, SGR percent, expresses the percentage increase in weight per day over a set period. The respiration rate is used as a simple observable indicator of stress in fish. It can record changes in environmental conditions, such as temperature, salinity and available oxygen. The maturation and spawning indicator principally relates to two breeding types, those being hatcheries and fish bred for sale as a product in the large commercial weight classes. 
There are a series of physiological indicators linked to fish welfare. These mainly include hormonal, biochemical, osmotic balance, oxidation and hematological indicators. When fish become stressed from external stimuli, they are likely to show signs of panic behaviour. Injuries are common during handling, such as crowding, catching and transporting. Behaviour is a significant indicator for checking the correctness and severity of management practice. Spawning fish are bred in land-based installations so that the environmental rearing, reproduction and handling of the aquatic animals may be controlled. This represents a small percentage of the total farmed population and their management entails different challenges from fish breeding for production in floating cages. At the pre-fattening stage, fish are reared in land-based open-loop tanks. The purpose of this period is to acclimatise the fish with commercial feed and increase their body weight to prepare them for transfer and farming in sea cages. In Greek fish farming, almost all European sea bass and gilt-head sea bream production is carried out in floating sea cages. The fish spend most of their lives in this environment until they are harvested and slaughtered. The environment in the cages can be described as stable on certain factors, since they are features of the sea which do not experience sudden changes. Contrastingly, there are factors such as temperature and oxygen which show seasonal changes.